Hi guys, it's Steve from Disruptive Wealth Creation. If you were to look at the stock market now, you would see that companies like the Bank of America, Goldman Sachs and other banking institutions are doing pretty well and flying, while the fintech companies are dropping in share value. But could that soon change? Watch this video and find out why. The problem with banks is that they are outdated. They no longer fit into the modern life we live in. I mean, let's be serious. Who rings the bank manager now, arranges an appointment, drives to the bank and spends an hour filling in forms? Not many, probably some poor old soul who hasn't got any friends. Those days are gone. Nowadays, people get onto their mobile phone or computer and they are able to find out in minutes or even seconds whether they can get a loan and what their credit score is. Banks are losing money hand over fist. Branches are closing down by the hundreds. Those big buildings are no longer an asset but an expensive liability. Rents are high and footfall is low. In 2019, ARK Invest carried out some research and found it costs a bank in the offline world $925 to get a customer and start making money, while fintech companies, it only takes them $20 to do the same. Banks are having to charge late fees, high interest on loans, minimum account fees to open and close an account, and fees if there is insufficient funds in the bank account. Why? because they need to cover the costs of their buildings and to service their ATMs. Ark Invest found that customers need to have at least £6,500 in the bank just for the bank to break even. Most US customers in 2020 were only holding on average around $3,500 in the bank, so banks have been losing money. With such small sums, banks are lucky to make $300 on the lifetime of a customer at those rates. So what has changed? Where is the fintech explosion coming from? Well, in 1990 only two people in every thousand people had a mobile phone. Now 30 years later everyone has a mobile phone and you can do telephone banking almost anywhere in the world at any time of day or night. In the old days, you got financial advice from a financial advisor. Now you get it from a robot advisor, from software and algorithms. Look at these new companies. The one thing they all have in common is that 20 years ago, many of them did not exist. Now they have grabbed over $40 billion of the market and they are still growing. Stay to the end and I will tell you about two things that you should be aware of. But, getting back to banks, are they fighting back? Are they winning? Well, as far as giving financial advice, they are swimming against the tide. Because, as I said earlier, algorithms and software have given in to robots. Furthermore, this has been compounded with companies like Apple, Facebook and Amazon providing their own financial services for payments. Alipay is a good example of this. This is money that unfortunately is not going to the bank. On another front, the banks now have cryptocurrency which is growing. And to this the banks are responding with a digital currency. If it works, it will save the government a lot of money. But the banks will still be closing as they will only need one central command centre for the currency and it will be online. So maybe it's time to start thinking about investing in fintech and thinking about a world without banks. Even the World Bank and the IMF are beginning to lose their popularity. Examples of nightmare scenarios can be found in Pakistan, Brazil, most of Latin America and Greece. El Salvador took the bold step of making Bitcoin its national currency and other countries may follow. People may say that Bitcoin is on a dip, 
but so is the stock market. So finally, what are the two things that we should be concerned about with the new digital transformation taking place? Well, the first one is cybersecurity. Countries like Russia and China could try and close our economies down on the internet. Secondly, depending on which country you live in, where there are digital currencies, countries could restrict your use of the currency. For example, the crisis could limit you using the internet by not allowing payment for certain news channels. Can you imagine living in a world we could only watch Tucker Carlson on Fox News? Guys, thank you for watching this video. Stay safe and see you in the next one.